Hello, nephew community, and welcome to today's podcast, highlighting the importance of the role of nutrition and lifestyle management for patients with kidney disease and related conditions as part of the nephew and nutrition and nef chef work stream. I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Dr. Laura Frank, and I am a nephrology medical science liaison with Otsuka Pharmaceutical Development and Commercialization, Inc. Today, we are going to be meeting with Dwayne Sunwalt, who is our expert chef showcased on the Nef Chef as part of Nephew Nutrition. I'd like to introduce him by a bio really quickly before he begins. Dwayne Sunwald, known as Chef Dwayne, is a graduate from the Culinary Arts Program at Spokane Community College, where he is now a culinary arts instructor. He has been nominated twice into the who's who of community college teachers by his own st students. Dwayne has cooked from country clubs to private resorts in the wilderness of the Pacific Northwest. Bill Gates' family had Dwayne personally cater a private meal for one of the family celebrations. He has also been a guest chef preparing meals for the athletes of the Calgary Winter Olympics in 1988. Dwayne was diagnosed with chronic kidney disease in 2000. After 18 months of treatment, Dwayne changed his diet and started seeing significant improvements in his health. Today, Dwayne has been able to put his kidney disease into remission with the guidance of his medical team and his dietary changes. Because of these results, Dwayne volunteers for the National Kidney Foundation. His work includes being a past chairman and current member of the Patient Family Council, speaking before congressmen in the Capitol building about kidney disease and healthcare reform, peer-to-peer -peer mentoring and other kidney patients, and is the chef for the National Kidney Foundation's Kidney Kitchen. So I am so delighted today because we wanted to have a podcast with Chef Dwayne so he could better describe his journey with CKD and how he used nutrition to decrease and delay CKD progression and to improve his own health. You will notice that on the Nef Chef, we will have cooking demonstrations from Chef Dwayne. And so I wanted you to better understand his story and I hope that you take advantage of our cooking demonstrations as healthcare providers so that you can help your patients better comply with CKD diet recommendations. Dwayne, thank you for joining us today on Nephew, and we can't wait to hear your personal story. Well, thank you for that introduction. Um, yes, I go by Chef Dwayne. Um, I consider myself a kidney patient. Um, in about 2000, I was 40 years old and I was losing a lot of energy and I didn't do anything about it. And I progressed and continually got worse until um, all of a sudden I started having migraine headaches and I've never had those before. So um, I went to my general practitioner and for three months I was in and out of his office um, being diagnosed for migraine headaches and hypertension. And what my doctor was trying to assess was, were migraines causing the hypertension or was hypertension causing migraines? So after three months of not getting much better, um, I went back to the doctor and actually saw the PA, his physician's assistant, who had been following my case. And the PA said, I don't know what to do with you. I'm just gonna send you down to the lab like a, a patient I've never met. And I said, okay, I came back sitting in the exam room, and this was the first time I was ever told that I had kidney disease and I was spilling a ton of protein. I was spilling over 12 grams of protein. Wow. So um, he said, you really need, you know, you need to get in and see a nephrologist. And before I could even schedule my appointment within the following week, um, I literally crashed, went through the emergency room of our medical center and was admitted into the hospital. And it was the next day that I actually met my first nephrologist. He diagnosed me with minimal change disease. Um, we did a kidney biopsy, sent it over to the University of Washington for confirmation, and started a treatment of pretty high um, steroids, was what he put me on. And 
Um, over the next four months, um, I gained about 75 pounds from being on the steroids. And I was constantly, like every few weeks, having more and more complications. And never once did he ever talk to me about diet. So um, after four months of you know, being overweight, my life was pretty miserable, and, and my creatinine level kept rising, um, I decided to have a couple consults. So um, I went over to the University of Washington. Um, I had a consult with Dr. Kauser and one of the fellowship students. And um, it was really interesting that the fellowship, the fellow doctor was so funny because she's like, I'm so excited. You're the first rural horror story I've ever got to work with. And I'm like, wow, I'm kind of insulted by that, but OK. And, uh, you know, being a being a, a medical student, she ran me through every test possible and all the results came back the same. So I set up a second consult with Dr. Catherine Tuttle here in Spokane, Washington, who's director of research for Providence Medical Center. And um, Dr. Tuttle um, reviewed my case and said, yes, you know, it's definitely you have minimal change disease. We can continue working and get you to a better quality of life and um, lower your proteinuria. And I kept asking her, what else can I do? What else can I do? And so she said, well, you know, your kidneys are stressed out. I'd recommend um, you cut back on the animal protein. I heard the directions, but being a typical patient, I really didn't follow that advice very quickly. So um, I continued down the pharmaceutical path. Um, my blood pressure got better under control. Um, I was having a real hard time actually as my kidney function improved being weaned off of the pregnisone. Um, if their time they would try to wean me like five milligrams or 10 milligrams at a time, I would crash and then up the dosage would go again. And while all this was going on um, here at Spokane Community College in our culinary arts program, we actually have a registered dietitian who teaches our students nutrition. And she had been following my case. So after about 18 months of this chronic kidney disease, she came into my office one morning and she said, I want to do an experiment. I want to take you off of animal protein for 90 days and let's see what happens. And you know, I had been so sick for so long, I was pretty ready to do this. In fact, I was ready to do it the next day. And the wisdom of this dietitian was, no, I want you to wait and start Monday morning. And I said, okay, what's so magical about Monday morning? And she goes, I want you to have the weekend to eat what you want. Now, being a patient, we don't always listen very well. I heard this registered dietitian say I could eat as much as I wanted. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, I was a kidney patient, I was tired, I was exhausted, my creatinine level had been rising. It, it rose to an actual level of um, 4.99. So I was right there, you know, the, the joke is getting ready to be fitted for the dialysis chair. So I took the weekend, um, I got home from work Friday afternoon, I was exhausted, tired, crawled into my recliner. And at this point in my life, I had two small children and about four o'clock that afternoon, one of my children comes up to me and goes, Dad, we'd like pizza for dinner. And I'm like, yes, I'll take care of this. My first night, I don't have to cook, I'm tired. And the dietitian said I could eat as much as I wanted. So I ordered four large pepperoni pizzas with extra cheese for a family of four with two small kids. So needless to say, at about two o'clock in the morning, after eating pizza for dinner, I was so sick. I thought I caught the flu and I was so miserable. In fact, I was so miserable, I didn't eat the entire rest of the weekend. And, you know, I'm, I'm a kind of a slow patient. So about Sunday afternoon, it dawned on me that the pizza had made me this sick. So motivationally, come Monday morning, I was very motivated to change my diet. So I started on a Monday morning. I took out as much animal protein as possible. I had already um, was restricted, you know, my sodium level. But what amazed me was within two weeks of changing my diet, I actually started feeling better. 
And the medications I'd been on for 18 months never made me feel this good. So for me, that was a huge motivational factor that got me supporting a plant-based diet. And over the next couple of years, by staying on that plant-based diet, I was actually able to improve my kidney function and wean off of all medications. And so for the last 20 years, I have been off of all medications and have totally been living on a plant-based diet. That is incredible. Well, you know, being a dietitian myself, uh, I have to say that you truly are what you eat, right? And and this just shows that, um, you know, food is medicine. And, and we know that, but for you in particular, uh, you have traded actual medications for food that is your medicine. And you've been able to delay kidney disease progression by doing so. So I'd like to better understand uh, when you say a plant-based diet, would you say that if uh, you had a certain percentage that you would recommend individuals target for for plant-based nutrition, uh, would you share that with us? And also, do you also couple that with an overall low protein diet Or do you uh, not worry about protein restriction because most of the proteins that you're receiving are plant-based? Okay, so the the first part of the question, um, I first started with a goal of trying to achieve a 100% plant-based diet, going completely vegan. Um, Knowing that 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 was impossible, um, we don't have a vegan bakery in this town at the time, so I was able to remove animal protein as far as the basic entrees on your plate. Um, and that's what that was my goal with what I started with. <clears throat> Today, obviously, my goal is to keep um, my animal protein below 10%. Um, and typically for me, I would consider if I ate something that was an animal protein, I'm cheating, you know, I'm being a bad person. And um, I probably only do that a couple times a month at most. So, um, but what I find is because sometimes, you know, if I'm if I'm doing a lot of physical activities, I'm just super hungry and I don't fill up. And then I'll have a few bites of like um, like a roasted chicken breast or something like that. Um, but typically, um, I think once you get accustomed to a plant based diet, you're pretty comfortable and you're you you don't feel starved. And I don't I don't feel deprived at all which I feel very fortunate about. Okay. And then what was your second part of that question? Well, just like, do you, do you follow a low protein diet, uh, quote unquote, low protein diet uh, as recommended in CKD diet management? Or would you say that just simply following a plant-based diet meets that need? Um, When I was first put on the diet, I was, I was, um, given directions to try to keep my protein level at about 75 grams or less. Um, So once I understood how much protein that was, then I converted, as I converted over to this plant-based diet, I really don't concentrate on how much protein I eat anymore um, because there's so many different plant-based foods that have some protein in them. And you know, we've, we've finally gone away from that. You have to eat a combination of plant-based protein so you have all the essential amino acids. Now we know you can eat those anytime over a 24, 48-hour period. So I actually love a plant-based diet because it's so much more creative and I have so much more flexibility. Um, my family has not converted to a plant-based diet, so I cook for them. So what I find for them is I have to go to the meat counter and create their meal. You know, are we having beef, chicken, pork, fish tonight? For me, I just go to the produce section and whatever's fresh, that's what I get to work with. So I just feel so lucky to be able to cook a plant-based diet. Also at my age and in my career, this whole cooking for kidney disease is like a whole new cuisine. And so I just love this new challenge. That's awesome. So do you feel that this uh, challenge or opportunity, if you will, has made you a better cook? (laughs) Oh, yes. Yes. Actually, I am so appreciative of my kidney disease. And I know patients think I'm crazy. But um, 
when you're living through a kidney disease and you have such limited energy, you want to be as efficient as possible because you're in this constant world of fatigue. So what it helped me do is it helped me better time manage myself in my home kitchen. Um, typically when I wasn't feeling well, I would rest up on Saturday, cook on Sunday for the week. And then that way I followed my dietary guidelines all week. If I didn't do my food preparation, then I'm like a typical American who I don't have enough time, I'm tired, and man, those drive-through windows are such a convenience, but they're not always the healthy convenience. Yeah, so the other part of your journey I'd love to better understand is really the help from your multidisciplinary team, from your nephrologist down to your dietitian, and any other influential individual that you'd like to discuss today? Okay, yes. Um, you know, there's always been a kind of a conflict between professional chefs and registered dietitians. And there's some great funny horror stories of how, you know, dietitians have tried to work with chefs. And I think for me, I really appreciate a dietitian's knowledge about science and nutrition that's your expertise and you most dietitians don't have an expertise in flavor that's what chefs are trained in so i'm a i'm just this advocate about this team concept and i love working with dietitians because i always learn something from them and then i get to go back into the kitchen and apply what the dietitian has taught me I feel very, very fortunate that I have a nephrologist that strongly, strongly supports nutrition. She understands how important it is. Um, it's interesting, I asked her literally about 10 years later, I said, when you put me, suggested a plant-based diet, what were the outcomes you expected? And she said, Duane, I expected to see a slight improvement in your kidney function. She goes, I had no idea it could put you in remission. So that helped me understand why no one ever talked about plant-based diets as strongly as they do now for patients. So um, the other thing is I have the opportunity to work with medical people all over the country and from different countries. And I'm fascinated because they always teach me something. Um, Dr. Josie in New York, I mean, obviously I love this guy. I wanna be president of his fan club because he's all about plant-based diets. Yeah. But every time I've heard him speak, I always learn something new that I can apply or change in the kitchen. So I'm always so appreciative of that. Yeah, well, thank you for opening that window of opportunity for us because uh, Nephew community, you should know that Dr. Joshi is actually one of our advisors on Nephew Nutrition Workstream. And we are planning on getting Chef Dwayne and Dr. Joshi as a panel discussion as we move forward and offer more of this interactive information on Nephew Nutrition. And so we uh, look forward to those opportunities, Dwayne. I, as the registered dietitian, uh, will also uh, offer up the fact that we also have some uh, advisors and other consultants who are actually specialty certified renal dietitians. And so again, I think that uh, just learning, you know, how we can all work together uh, to help provide information for our HCPs or our healthcare providers so that they can be better clinicians to drive better patient outcomes. Uh, so we look forward to having you bring palatable, and yummy recipes our way so that we can drive home some of these CKD diet management strategies and ultimately get that information to our patients for improved outcomes. I, I totally agree with you. Um, I think the number one complaint I hear from patients all over the world is they hate their diet. Yeah. And I, I don't blame them. When I first started studying a kidney patient's diet, it doesn't taste good. And if we want our patients to be compliant, we have to give them flavor. And so that's just my new philosophy in life is I want to give patients flavor. Okay. Well, we will look forward to your favorable, flavorful 
recipes as we move forward. Thank you for joining us today on Nephew Nutrition and in particular the Neff Chef. And I'd like to close our podcast today thanking you again, Chef Dwayne. And we really enjoyed hearing about your journey. And I just love the personal success story to show you are what you eat. So thank you again. And uh, thank you, Nephew Nutrition, for listening to our program. This has been brought to you by Nephew Nutrition. And uh, it is found on nephew.org, sponsored by Otska Pharmaceutical Development and Commercialization, Inc. I'm Dr. Laura Frank, nephrology medical science liaison, registered dietitian, and I'll see you later. Thank you, Dwayne. Bye. Thank you. Bye.